The first thing that you're going to do from the staff portal is locate the HAPRA icon. If you don't see it in your list, what you can do is do a quick search for it and click on the search icon and that will bring you right to HAPRA. I'm going to open up the link I'm going to locate the class that I need to make the Google Meet for. And I'm going to click on the class info tab. Right here across the top, you can see the Google group Happer email address for your students. So I'm going to highlight this and then press control C to copy. I'm going to go back to the staff portal and this time I'm going to locate my calendar and click on that link. Before I go any further, I need to ensure that I am signed in to my work email address. So you can see right here is my at ocsb.ca. So I'm good to go to create my event. The next what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on create and then more options. Once I see this full page, what I'm going to do is uncheck invite others and see guest lists. We do not want our students inviting other people or seeing the private emails of other students. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to click on add guests and I'm going to press control V to paste in that uh, student group and press enter. Once I do that, a few things happen. I can see this little down arrow with the number nine. This is the amount of students in your class. You can see their list right there. And then I can also notice that this um, join with Google Meet has been added. So that's great. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to give my Meet a title. We recommend name, uh, subject and grade. I'm going to then pick my start date for my class and I'm going to start this on Monday because this will be for next Monday on the 13th of September and since I am a grade four English teacher and I'm going to be seeing these students multiple times throughout the day. I'm going to do a, a custom repeated event um, and I'm going to pick a start time at the beginning when I see them for the first time and then my end time will be at the very end of the day. Please note that this process will vary according to your role as a teacher. For example, if you taught French, you may, um, and have multiple classes, you would create unique links for those different students. And if your class started at nine and ended at 1030, then you would create it for that time. So please make note that there, this part will vary according to your role. So I'm going to change that back to my end time. And I'm going to say custom. And I want this to repeat Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. And I want this to end, we started on the 13th of September. And we are going to go till the 17th. We are creating events only for one week at a time um, because in certain situations, your calendar data may be exceeded and then your calendar will break and no longer be able to function. Do not create events for longer than a week at a time. This is especially important if you are creating multiple events throughout the day um, for different classes. Okay, so we are good to go Monday to Friday on September 17th. I make sure that this is the week and then I'm going to hit done. Before I hit um, save, there's a few more things I need to do. So I'm going to double check. It's the 13th. It's nine ends at uh, 1530. And then I'm going to click on this uh, little gear right here. 
this is very important. You need to have this unchecked. So I clicked it and what this does is it creates a waiting room for your students. So if you're not there, they won't be able to get in uh, without you. Some other neat things you can do from this uh, little cog wheel is uh, click on breakout rooms and you can uh, set pre-set up some breakout rooms in advance if you want to. Simply type the names of the students and once the name appears you would click on their name and you can add it there. So you can either uh, drag students' names or you can um, type in their names, whatever is easier. Sometimes if you have long lists, you might not be able to drag them. So once you're done that, you can hit save. I don't need breakout rooms for this session, so I'm going to hit cancel. Okay, so we are good to go. Quick access is off. Our start and end times are correct. Um, we are ready to save. We are going to hit save and we are not going to send an email. We want our students going to the staff, to the student portals and clicking on the Google Meet icon. So do not send. You can see here when I move my calendar to Monday, September 13th, I have my repeated event uh, to Friday. I am just gonna go one step further and take a quick look at next week. And yes, there's nothing there. You do not want this repeated for months um, on end because you will exceed your calendar data. So we just want that for the week. Um, now, when you're ready to repeat this event for the following week, starting on September the 20th, the easiest thing to do is go into your Monday class and you're going to hit the little pencil. You're going to edit this event. So once you're done your Friday class, you would go in and you would then instead uh, choose the Monday the 20th and then click on your custom and then ends on the 25th and hit done. So now what you've done is you've just changed the dates. You didn't add any more events and you're going to hit uh, save. So once we do that, after you edit, we do not send an update. You don't want multiple emails going to your students. So do not send. And what you can see is these events have been taken away because uh, at the end of the week, you don't need them anymore. And then they are populated for the following week. So what you'll do is either on the Friday after your class or as long as it's before the following week, um, maybe on the Sunday, you can just simply change the dates of your classes. There are two ways to join your class Meet. You can, from the staff portal, click on the Meet icon and see your list of Meets for the day here. And click on Join Now. Or what you can do is um, click on your calendar. locate the meet and click on join with meet right from your calendar and click on join now. This is a student view how they will uh, join the Google meet. Uh, first of all, they need to ensure that they are signed in with their uh, proper student account. So right here you notice that it says student3 at stu.ocsb.ca. So you want to make sure that that is um, what they're signed in with and that the sync is on if they're using a laptop. You don't need to worry about the sync if they're using a Chromebook. So from the student portal, I'm going to click on the meet icon. Again, this is a student account 
and they notice that the teacher has invited them to a class. So it's 12 p.m. I'm ready to join my teacher. They can turn off their camera and mic for the beginning uh, if they want to, and then they're going to click on join now. So because the teacher is not here, they will get a waiting for hosts to join. This is because the teacher has turned off quick access, so they've unchecked that box. So that is very important. So I'm going to join my class. I do want to point out something that um, even though my students are in the waiting room, it still will say no one else is here. So I'm ready to join. So I am going to click on join now. And you can see that my students have just hopped right in. If you get a pop up saying someone wants to join this call, always deny entry to anyone who knocks in, regardless of what the name may indicate. There is no way of knowing if this person is who they say they are and they must be invited always on the calendar event. So you never need to admit anyone. All of your invited guests will hop right in. So once you are in the meeting with your students, uh, there's a few things that we want you to uh, make note of. First of all, down here in the corner, in the right-hand corner, are host controls. Um, so you want this one to be toggled on, so in the on position where it is blue. And this is going to allow you to restrict uh, what the participants can do. So for example, um, if you need to mute uh, one individual or the entire group. Um, and also, this is a new feature, uh, lets you appoint co-hosts. When you are done uh, your class, uh, or if you are giving them a lunch break, for example, and you're ready to end the call, you want to just make sure that quick access is turned off and that you always use the hang up button. The hang up button is going to give you an option to end the call. This is going to end the call for everyone so that students can't be hanging around by themselves. Um, so we want to make sure that the call is ended for anyone, uh, everyone all at the same time. So this needs to be in the off and we're going to end the call. And you see this message, you've ended the call for everyone.